Yeah, um, so I'm Lars, Lars Brink. I come from Denmark. I'm the head of R&D in a small company called Keep Focus in Denmark. It's an IoT company. But today I want to discuss how we can rethink our Angular projects using some experimental functions from ID for rendering and managing change detection. Because I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to destroy all Angular modules. So again, how many, how many actually know how ng modules work? Show of hands, who knows? How do Angular modules work? Okay, well, that, that's a good reason to get rid of them. So who would like to build Angular applications without ng modules? Show of hands. Right, well, not that many. I was hoping for a bit more, but uh, let's see if I can convince you. The Angular team, they are always up to something. And they are always giving you small hints about what's to come in the future. Um, I took special note last year at the Angular Connect conference in London, where um, Igor and Alex were discussing Angular modules. And Igor actually said that it's a thing they put into the framework for the sake of the compiler, which means it's not for developers, it's for the compiler. So, they are actually working towards making them optional. They will not go away. You can still use them if that's your thing, but I would like to get rid of them. Alex Rickabo also said that NG modules, they are difficult to reason about, especially to new Angular developers. And I consider them simply a layer of indirection, an unnecessary layer of indirection. Alex also said that if, if he could, he would rip them up out of Angular Framework, but he probably can't in the near future, but at least make them more simple or change how they work. So the view engine, which is the current rendering engine of Angular, it depends very heavily on Angular modules, but the Ivy rewrite is coming up. So let's take a look at Ivy. What ID will do to our applications if we don't rewrite them, it will give us slightly faster builds, a bit tinier bundles, better debugging experience, and it's all based on this IV instruction set, which is a concept similar to the incremental DOM library by Google. So, because of this instruction set, IV is actually very tree shakeable, even in the core rendering engine components of Angular itself which is what, if you have been working with Angular elements, micro frontends, or applications that are not in full control of the entire page, you will have seen that if we have to do that with a view engine today, we will get really big bundles, or will also be necessary to share a lot of the Angular packages in the global scope. So it's pretty difficult to do, you can pull it off, but it's not easy. Let's imagine for a second that we build an application with Ivy, and we don't use Angular modules. If we don't bootstrap an Angular module, we won't have ng-zone. And ng-zone is what usually triggers change detection a lot of the time. So how can we do that without ng-zone? And this is something Max has been talking a lot about at conferences. There's this new experimental function called mod dirty. There's also one called detect changes. I won't go into the details here, but Every time we change local component state, we have to let Angular know that the state has changed, so we need to update the view. And that's done using Mach 30. So in this simple city component, at the click of a button, the method will be called, but we have to let Angular know we want to run change detection. Today, we're using Angular modules everywhere in our apps. And these are the use cases, main use cases for Angular modules. And since version 6 of Angular, we've had pre-shakeable providers for managing injectors without Angular modules. 
it's actually easier to do than the old way of providing in modules. And it results in less, less errors in general. Um, so that's pretty common knowledge by now. We should all be able to do that. But some of the main uh, use cases of Angular modules are actually when we are compiling templates. We have to link together components, directives, and pipes. Every time we mention one of these things in our templates, we need to let the Angular compiler know which component are we talking about. But that's a big job of the engine modules right now. I would like us to come up with a thing called tree shakeable components instead. Usually, entry components in Angular means you can't shake them away. They will always be part of the bundle. Uh, but if you list a component as an entry component, you can dynamically render it, but then you lose tree shaking. Well, I want both. And we can get that with Ivy eventually. Not right now, but we'll try to get there anyways. Um, the tree shaking components, they will be um, independent from Angular modules because they will have component factories right in the metadata, and static properties, instead of having ng component factories or ng module factories. So they are also self contained in the way that you can compile them ahead of time and you won't have to recompile them when some other part of the app changes. So they're really awesome. They will also enable us to. Um, eventually get rid of Angular modules, and they, will, they can become the smallest compilation unit, the smallest unit for code splitting, instead of splitting on Angular modules, for example, with lazy loading uh, modules for routing. And um, it's just some really nice features to have, but how do we actually get there? Well, we can't get there without actually changing our code. What we're looking at here is a proposal for Components um, API by the Angular team, by Rob Walmart and other people. It's not something you can find anywhere in the code right now, but the Angular team wants your feedback on, is this something we would like in the Angular framework? And what we can get here are actually three shakeable components. Um, so they don't depend on Angular modules at all, but to not depend on Angular modules, you have to list all the declarable dependencies you rely on. So in this template here, we see the IV button directive and the IV click event that comes with that. It's just a simple button directive. Um, so to use that, to link it into the template, we have to list it up there in the depth property. And depth is short for declarable dependencies, which again means components, directives, and pipes. And since we don't have modules, we have to remember to use the mark dirty function for managing change detection. Every time we change local UI state, we have to call mark dirty on the component. But this, this code is not available today. So how can we, I want to do it anyways. So let's see how we can do that. Ah, just one more thing. This is how you use that city component in your app component instead. So, just in the template, and then we, we want to use the zip component, so we have to list it in the depth property. We also use the capitalized pipe, so we list it up there in the appendices as well. Still part of the proposal, so that's something you can do today. The thing you can do today, though, is what I call single component angular modules, or scams for sure. And there's actually a scam generator for the angular CLI, how cool is that? Let's generate a scam. I know what we need. We need a scan. Okay, let's generate one. That's cool. <laughs> so, single component Angular modules, they only worry about a single component. So, to see which dependencies we need, we only have to consider a single component template. So, instead of importing a bunch of, of different Angular modules that are exposing a lot of different declarables, we only imp Im import other single component Angular modules so we get exactly the declarable dependence we need to compile the template. This is also useful in some cases when you want to do isolated component tests since this single module will give you everything you need to run it in the, in the Angular test module. Um, we can place them in the same file and um, 
we'll take a look at how that works. So let's fake tree shake up components using scams. This is the same component, the city component. We have an, a button directive, but the depth property is not there. We can't use that yet. So instead, let's create an NG module. The only thing it declares is the city component. The only thing that exports is the city component. And the only things that are imported by that Angular module is what is actually used in its template, the button directive. So again, this is scams, so we need to import a button module, a scam for the button directive. And then we move up the component hierarchy to the app component. And to use this SIPI component, again, we can create a scam for the app component. It only declares app component. It only imports the scams for the declarable dependencies used in this template. So it uses the SIPI component. OK, we have to import the SIPI module, the SIPI scam. We use the capitalized pipe. OK. We import the capitalized module that only has the capitalized pipe. But when we do this, we don't get less modules. In fact, we get more. But it's a means to an end. And it's something we can safely to do today if we want later on to move to actual tree shakeable components. Once the proposal is hopefully there at some, some point later on. But we can take it a step further than this. We can create component render modules. Like before, these modules are only concerned about single components, but they, instead of importing other scams, they declare all the components, all the pipes, all the directives used by this single component. It'll make sense in a minute. There's a weird thing about using this technique. It is that you are actually declaring, for example, the same component in multiple modules. Because every time, for example, that component is used by different other components, it will be in the declarations option of that module as well, the component render module. And to do this, we need the just-in-time compiler, so we have to import the Angular compiler into the bundle. So this is definitely a big hack, and it only works because of some interesting timing issue. And uh, I've had help by an expert called uh, Joost Kuhorn. He's an Angular contributor, and he's also part of Angular and Dev. Let's look at how it actually looks in code. We have the same SIBI component, and in the bottom is where the interesting part is. As I mentioned, we have declarations of the CP component itself and every declarable dependency used in its template. So it uses the ID button directive, so it's declared in that module. And to use that CP component and its component render module, look at what's happening here. We're not referencing the CP render module. Instead, we're referencing directly the SIPI component. So now we've actually got the SIPI component in two different NG modules. You see here, in the app render module, there is the SIPI component in declarations. And before, it's there again. This shouldn't work, but it does. So we also need to include other um, uh, declarable dependencies used by the app component, like before, the capitalized pipe. OK, we declare the capitalized pipe. So that capitalized pipe would be also declared in multiple modules. But we still have a module per component. And it's not AOT compatible. So what can we do about that? I'd like to have a head of time compilation. So instead, we can use what I call feature render modules. Using this technique, there will be one module per bundle, so one for the main bundle, and one for each uh, lazy loaded feature module. So instead of having a mod module per component, for example, there will just be a simple array listing the component itself and its declarable dependencies. 
And all of that will propagate up through the components until finally it gets to the top level uh, module, the feature render module, and it'll declare all the components, all the pipes, all the directives used in that feature. Pretty weird. And you would expect that there would be duplicates, but Angular will take care of that. So we end up declaring everything in a single module, which is usually bad, but in this case, we do it to get rid of Angular modules as much as we can. This is what it looks like. It's the same component, the zip component as before. Still need to schedule a change detection. But we got rid of the module and this component. Instead, we have a simple array listing the zip component, listing its declarable dependencies, which was the button directive. And now we want to use that in our app component. So we declare the app component, we declare the capitalized pipe, and then we don't import, we, again, we declare all the civi types. So that was the, the array from before, the one at the bottom here with the civi component and the button directive. We put that array directly into the, the Angular module metadata and Angular will take care of flattening that array and getting rid of duplicates. So every declarable is only declared once, but everything is declared in the same Angular module. It's kind of weird, but it gets us, gets us closer to, to actually getting rid of more modules. So now we, have, we are left with one Angular module per bundle. Pretty neat. So now we solve the second use case for Angular modules. But there are a few remaining. Today, to bootstrap a component, we need an Angular module. There's no way around it. But I want to get rid of Angular modules, so how can I do that? Well, we can use Ivy. Again, this is an experimental function, but I have a pretty good feeling it'll be around later on. Or something similar. So, we can call any component, since it's a tree shakeable component, we can call it with render component, bootstrap it to the DOM anywhere. And despite that, it's still tree shakeable. But when we do it this way, we have to be aware of these points here that we let go of the ng zone, we don't have application initializers, and there is no bootstrap hook for us. And like I told you many times before, we have to manage change detection ourselves in the components. So that was the third use case. Let's look at the very last one. We still need modules when we want to lazy load application features. You think there is any way around that? Does anyone want to take a guess? How, how could you do this? So, so where are you? Just lazy load oh, the components. Just lazy load the component. But we can only lazy load the modules. So, how? Angular elements. Well, okay, that's an entirely different thing. Also a very nice feature though. But, okay, so we have, today we have in, uh, the dynamic imports in our Angular applications, if we use the Angular CLI, a web path. So if we dynamically import the ECMAScript module containing a component, we can just, sorry, <laughs> it's the use case we want to solve. So we, if we dynamically import this file containing only the component, then we can pass it on to this render component function we saw before. So now we have lazy loading. That's all we need. We unpack the component from the, the exported module and we pass it on to render component. So that's it. We solved all the use cases on Angular modules, pretty much. <laughs> and we got rid of most of the Angular modules, even without the final release version or the first release version of IE. So these are all the clever people who helped me out, figure all of this out. Uh, a few of them are here today. And um, they all know a giant amount of things about Ivy. So if you have any questions, they are the right persons to ask. 
uh, Martin Kirstein uh, down in the corner there. He, he helped me review this talk. He's a friend of mine. And uh, I'm very thankful to him for this. I also like to thank all the people who helped me review the article this is based on. You can find it on Angular and Dev. So to sum up, let's look at what I want from tree shaded components with Ivy. It's not, it'll not be there in the first version, but I want the Angular team to enable us to do this eventually. It'll be some time after Ivy, but maybe it won't even be there. But that's where we want to we come into the picture. We need to experiment with this and give our feedback to the Angular team. Because I want us to get rid of every single Angular module, not only some of them, all of them. And to do that, we, we should learn how to bootstrap using render component. We need to schedule change detection with the mark dirty function. And we can use dynamic imports to lazy load modules, pass it on to render component. Sorry, lazy load components. These are the techniques we went through. You can use scams today. It's a safe migration path if you want to create a couple components eventually. You can use the component render modules. That's where there was still one Angular module per component, but it only declared that single component. It imported every declarable dependencies. No, it declared every declarable dependency, sorry. But we have to import the Angular compiler to do this, and it's not supposed to work, so it's a hack. But it works, you can play around with it. Then we have the feature render modules. That's where we have one module per bundle, and every component will export an array of its declarable dependencies and itself. And that the component using that one will re-export them with its own declarable dependencies, and it'll all end up in this top-level uh, Angular module in every bundle. And then there's the proposed component API. It's nowhere to be found. But that's where we want to go. But to get there, we need to experiment. So, I think this is all very interesting. And in fact, it's in line with what Mr. Heavery wants for the Angular framework. He wants us to be able to code split on a component level, and this appreciable components will actually help us take a step in that direction. He has a lot of other dreams and visions for Angular, and this is one of them. So let's see how we can do that. Let's experiment with these techniques. Let's give our feedback to Rob Wommel from the Angular team and say, hey, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> I like working without modules. So let's get rid of them. So, Thank you all for your time. I'm very happy to be here. And thank you. you can come find me in the speaker's corner just after this talk. Or you can come visit my workshop where I'll show you how to actually implement this in a small application.